subcontract change order. So I'll share my screen. Um, so this is on Dave Christofferson's job, Innovation Point. So he's gone in and he's got a change order from the owner. Um, and he's come in and he's entered the change order. Um, because it's with the owner, it's an external change order because we're getting paid. Uh, if you have a subcontractor that you're doing a change order for, but the owner's not paying you, you're not getting reimbursed for it, or it's not associated with a change order to the owner in general, then it would be an internal change order. So we're in the PM approved change orders. Um, he's got two items in this change order. Um, he's got item one, which is some added retaining wall, and item two, which is some imported fill that we've hauled in place. So he's gone into the estimate detail, and he's added the phase codes for hauling and purchasing the fill, and he's added the phase codes for placing the fill with the associated cost. Uh, on the added retaining wall, this is the one that's all subcontract. So he's come in and put the added square footage, their unit cost with their total amount in here. And he's actually gone ahead and interfaced this change order so it's in the system. So any time on a change order that you have a cost type eight associated with it, it will automatically take this phase code and this cost type and it'll set it up in the PM subcontract detail. Um, in the task menu up here up in the top, there's an option to jump right to that subcontract detail. So that screen pops up and it has this, it, it pulls up the job we were on, um, it pulls up what the original estimated square footage is, the original unit cost. So it now has this new line item down here You'll notice that a that, uh, couple things. It shows that we're in an approved change order, and it also automatically defaults to this, subcon this SL item type to change. Uh, we just need to come in and get to our vendor. So I'm going to do an F4 and do a search for anchor walls, anchor retaining walls. I'm going to add them in. I'm going to do an F4 on our subcontract ESL. So this is their original subcontract. Now this is going to be item two, which is a change order. So this is all in the system now assigned to anchor walls subcontract. From the file menu here, maybe even from the task menu. No, let's go to the file menu we can open up our SL header form. I don't think with this change order, we technically have to get into the SL header. Um, SL header is, they've changed the name of the actual program to PM subcontracts, but it will pull up um, anchor walls, MSE retaining wall contract. Click on interface and it will show us what's already interfaced. Non-interfaced, it will pull up and show us this change order that we just entered. Um, so from here, I don't know if the subcontract detail will do it, but from here we can come into this report and there's a PM sub change order form. You just have to type in the project number. Um, the subcontract that this is associated with. You can leave, if there's only one, you can leave these all blank. Um, and we're just going to preview it. I'm not even going to check any of these lower boxes. So it comes up with this change order for, on innovation point to anchor walls. Uh, <clears throat> comes up with their 350 feet, feet the amount. And down here at the bottom, original contract, change order amount, new contract sum. So 
So we can sign this. We can shoot it off to them to get a signature. Usually you have them sign it first. They send it back and we sign it, date it, and send them an executed copy. That's typically how you see it with the general contractors. Yeah. So once this is all, you know, once you've printed this off, send it off to them, kind of the last step is just to, to interface, do a, a PM interface. Um, you, you interface it before you send that to them. Can you still get back in there and and pull up that review? If you, if you interface the change order and they come back and tell you that there's errors or there's it's I wrong, see. then I think it's more difficult to undo it. it. And, and so you could wait to interface the change order until they signed it. A lot of times in our case, they've already sent us a change order request. Um, you're just submitting it to the owner. The owner's now approved it. Um, it's usually not a big deal to interface it. So you can get back in there and print the reports, all of that stuff after the fact. So here's the, the PM interface comes up. And Dave has done in the month of November so that he can account for the, the billing and all of that kind of stuff. So months right, you can validate it. Um, looks like a, there's already AP entry for that subcontract ledger. In a, in a, December batch. So I'll have to have Dave get into his subcontract, his SL worksheet, and delete that SL worksheet, and then we can go validate and interface it. So, so yeah, those are the basic steps. Anytime you have a change order that you entered an estimate detail with a cost type nine, they will automatically that into the cost type eight. Yeah, so cost type eight, it will automatically throw that into the PM subcontract detail. Um, normally, if you just go open the PM subcontract detail, it will come up with just the record type of original. And if it's coming through a pending or an approved change order, you have to change that drop down to be able to see um, those change order items that weren't part of the original contract. So, any questions, Cameron? No, that's kind of what, it, what I was wondering. Does that, does that help you? Is that what you were looking for? Yeah, we were, um, big thing we were looking for was that uh, when you previewed uh, the change order, um, something that you could send off to your sub you know, like us, we don't even we don't even we don't want to start work or even really start work before there's a contract. So, yeah. kind of a binding document, I guess, that you can send to your subcontractor um, was was one of the big things I was looking for. So we got Ernie with. I just cut out on me. Am I back? There you are. Okay. Um, I was helping Ernie on the Saratoga Springs Temple. Uh, our original contract didn't include the asphalt paving. That came out as a later bid package. And so we brought the asphalt paving in as a change order to the contract. And we put all the estimate detail in with all of the the cost type eight, the subcontract asphalt paving. And then I went in and I tried to come into the subcontract detail. And because it came in as an approved change order, it, we didn't already have a contract with Geneva Rock. And so when I went into the SL header and I tried to to create with the 
the template. Yeah. Uh, tried to create the subcontract for them with our itemized subcontract. I hit create and it came up blank. And so I had to go in and change all of the items. So by default, they were popping up as a as a change order item. I had to go create a blank item that wasn't a change order type that was a regular contract before it would let me generate the, the subcontract from our template. So that was kind of a, a quirky, quirky workaround that we had to do to get them a subcontract. Well, thanks. Well, any other questions? I think that's it. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop our recording then.